Hi, everybody. This is Antonio Nakshalfirovich from QueryStorm. So I've decided to take a look at ChatGPT and what it might be able to do in uh, Excel. A couple of other people have already done stuff like this. This is mostly an exercise for myself, but some uh, Excel users might find this interesting and possibly useful. So let's see what it can do. Basically, it can do two categories of things. It can help you build formulas, and it can answer general prompts. So let's start with, with the formulas. So let's add some numbers over here. and ask chat uh, GPT to suggest us a formula. And we can give it a prompt saying, count the number of different values in entire column A. Uh, and let's uh, let it think for a while. This occasionally happens. So it, it returned pound value. Uh, unluckily, it happens occasionally when the, the server is too uh, burdened. So uh, that, that can fail. And you can take a look at uh, what's going on if you click Show Logs, uh, and you can hover over the error. OK, the server had an error while processing your request. Sorry about that. OK. So the other thing you uh, can see over here is that the thing it returned is count unique. This is unfortunately not an Excel function. This is a Google Sheets function. Even though the suggest formula function internally primes it to favor Excel and not Google Sheets, uh, you still can end up with uh, formulas that are not specific to Excel uh, and formulas that are broken in general. So this isn't really something that you can use and trust, but it is something that can help you help you out. So we can kind of work around this as well. So this function, suggest formula, it takes additional parameters. So we can ask it to generate more than one result. So let's say we want to ask it to generate a maximum of five results. It can generate less than five if it doesn't have anything to offer. But it's not going to generate more, more than five if we specify this parameter. And this temperature parameter is very interesting. Basically, it tells ChatGPT how creative we want it to be. Zero is not creative at all. And one is extremely creative, which is a bit of a loose cannon. So in this, in this case, we want it to go broad, because like the, the original result is not very good. So we can do uh, 0 0.9 to ask it to a bit, be a bit more creative about what it returns. And uh, here's what it uh, comes up with. Now, OK, so this is a list of functions. We have to try these out and see if, uh, see if it works. So uh, the next bit of functionality that this package introduces is this uh, context menu. So we can uh, test formula. This, um, this formula returns pound name, which obviously is a result of a uh, function count unique not being available in Excel. This uh, sum product one, uh, that one seems a bit more promising, but still uh, division by 0. Let's try this one. This one gives five. This is promising. Uh, and this one, let's try that one as well. Uh, and this one says one. So uh, this candidate, this one looks promising. Uh, it uses the frequency function, which uh, is definitely the right function to use here. If we introduce a new value over here, uh, this increases. But if we add an another value that's uh, already contained here, it should not increment. So if we add one here, we can add a bunch of ones here, and uh, this number will never increment. So that seems, uh, that seems fine. We can get rid of this and this, and this is, in fact, the function that we actually need. So this is a hit and miss. So you can't really trust ChatGPT for uh, answers to exact problems, but you might be able to use this to help you out a little bit with the Excel formulas. So let's see how we can use ChatGPT for something a bit less exact. And this is what the other function in the package uh, is for. And this is the uh, prompt function. So we can, um, we can just ask uh, ChatGPT. We can just say, hey there, and see what it returns. It says, hey there, how can I help you? So let's see how we can use this for something that's less exact. So uh, let's give it the following prompt. Um, um, list the laws from Robert Greene's book, 48 Laws of Power. So um, we can try that. Um, we can let it think for a little while. It's All right, so after about a minute, um, this did take long, but um, it, it really depends on how um, how many people are using ChatGPT uh, when you're when you're trying this out. So this is a list, but if we wanted to play around with this, we'd we'd like to break this down into a list. 
So um, there is another uh, another extension that I've built. So if you go into extensions there uh, and go to online, there is uh, another extension here called windy.txt, and that one has functions for regular expressions. I'm going to use one because I already have that uh, package installed, so regex split. Uh, the pattern I want to use is a number followed by a dot followed by some spaces, and that is the pattern that, that I'm going to use to split this, um, this uh, string into multiple uh, values. So um, let's see how we can do that. So number followed by a dot followed by uh, any number of spaces. Um, actually, that's the, uh, um, that's the pattern. Uh, the input uh, should be uh, this cell. And the vertical parameter should be true, because I want it to be vertical, and this is the response. For some reason, I have an extra space over here. I don't know why. But anyway, so these are the, these are the results. So let's say we want to summarize all of these, so we can, do, um, we can use GPT prompt as well and ask it to uh, summarize uh, the following law in one sentence from Robert Greene's book. Um, and let's give it, it's not really a good, uh, good way to formulate this request, but uh, we'll see. I, I think it's still going to figure it out. All right, uh, so now we can uh, drag this uh, below and see if uh, we can get uh, answers to some of these uh, questions. So um, some of these uh, fail, but let's see if we, can, if we can make them work. Given that I have used this quite a bit, uh, so uh, let's try that, that again. Okay, let's try this one again. Um, let's try all of these again. So that's pretty much how you use it. Um, how responsive it is, uh, it really depends on the situation with the ChatGPT servers. You can use this for generating newsletters for various types of, um, so let's say you have like uh, people here and then they're categorized by a segment like job type or something like that. You can uh, customize a newsletter for that person for that particular job type. All right, now let's go over how to get this into Excel and how to configure it. So uh, this GPT extension that's built with uh, QueryStorm. QueryStorm is a way to use C Sharp and SQL inside Excel. Uh, the minimum thing you need to have to, in order to uh, run this extension and, and uh, other QueryStorm extensions is uh, the QueryStorm runtime, which you can get by clicking the, going to the download section and downloading the runtime installer. You can install the full installer as well if you want to uh, experiment with C Sharp and SQL in uh, Excel as well. Uh, but once you have the QueryStorm runtime installed, you are going to uh, get an extra tab in the Excel ribbon. And if you only have the runtime, you're only going to have these three buttons. If you have the full version of QueryStorm, you're going to have all of these buttons as well. So in this situation, I don't have the GPT extension installed. So if I, put, if I try to write prompt over here, I'm not going to get any suggestions. So if I want to get this function into Excel, I'm going to click extensions, go to online, and uh, download this GPT package onto my machine. Okay, so once I do that, uh, I'm going to have GPT prompt and GPT formula. So if I now write, uh, this is a test, and click OK, uh, this is going to fail. Now, the reason this fails is because I haven't configured the extension. The extension talks to uh, OpenAI's uh, GPT API. The API itself is not free, so each user needs to use their own API key in order to talk to it. There's a free uh, trial, which lasts, I don't know, one, uh, about three months, and after that you can have a paid subscription, and every user can generate their own API key and use the API key in order to um, consume the service. So the way to configure this is to go to uh, configure, click GPT, enter API uh, key here. So I'm going to paste my API key over here. I'm not going to hide this because um, I'm going to change the API key after this video anyway. So let's try this again and see if it works. So after a couple of seconds, okay, there's a test. Fine, this seems to be working correctly. So how do you get an API key? So let's go back to the uh, browser. Go to OpenAI website. Go to API. Log in. 
I'm going to log in with my uh, Google account. Go to uh, uh, click my uh, icon over here and view API keys. So I have an API key here, here and I can create uh, more API keys as well. So I can check my usage uh, in uh, this area over here and uh, set up my billing details over here. So I've used this quite a bit for uh, testing purposes and I've only used like $1 so uh, out of the 18 free dollars here. So you can do quite a bit of work uh, with this without getting charged uh, all that much. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think in the comment section below this video. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.